those are Hindu representations of Kali I could tell you a little bit about Kali here just the middle representation I'll use so um, she has eight legs spider spiders spin a web the web is fate the web of fate traps the unwary nature does that she's in a web of fire the uh, little fire arch there which is a mandorla, you can look that up if you want is also made out of skulls, that's what's on the inside of it so it's, it's skulls on fire, roughly speaking um, her hair is on fire and she has a headdress of skulls and uh, this guy she's standing on she just gave birth to him, which is why her belly is hollow and she's eating his intestines so, you know, and that's a deity, you might think, well why would something like that be a deity? and it's something like uh, well, it's the sum total of all fears and you know, you might think, well, you don't believe in that sort of thing it's like, yeah, you do, you just don't know you do of course you do you can't not believe in it you know, you're, the manner in which you allow it to be represented and what you do with those representations, that's a whole different matter but you know, you're not watching vampire movies for nothing right, you say, well, you don't believe in vampires, it's like that's actually not true you believe in them enough to go watch them on movies so like, wh wh where are you going to define belief exactly? if someone comes up to you and says, do you believe in vampires? you know, you're going to say, well, no and then they'll ask you, well, would you spend like two hours this month watching them? and the answer would be yes and so you might think, well, which is the better indicator of what you believe? like, what do you know about what you're like? who cares about your statements about yourself? you know, you think you have privileged access to what you're like? you don't, you've only been around for 18 years you know, and you inhabit this body that's been built up over 400 million years of life something like that, it might be longer than that so it is longer, I mean that's when crustaceans emerged, life itself is much older than that so, you know, the people who made this representation of Kelly assuming they made it, which they really didn't, because it manifested itself in their imagination which is a completely different thing they're trying to come to terms with something pretty awful or you might say they're trying to come to terms with the category of all awful things or you could even be more sophisticated than that and you could say they're trying to come to terms with the category of all awful things that also reveals new life that's a terribly paradoxical thing because Kelly can be transformed into something positive it's like, you know, logical people think well, something can either be A it can't be A and not A at the same time, right? that's a fundamental logical proposition but then, so let's say you have a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend you don't, you can't hate them and love them at the same time? I mean half your life or three quarters of your life will be in that state, you know families, it's like what is it, 50-50 love and hate? What, what defines a familial relationship might be intensity rather than you know, whether it's love or hate, it's intense and so you can certainly have a completely paradoxical relationship to yourself or to another person and so part of what happens with these symbolic representations is that they're they're more accurate than mere logic because life is one of those life is composed of oppositions in conjunction and oppositions in conjunction simultaneously so there's very little about it that's logical at all, but that doesn't matter because you still have to deal with it you, you have to deal with it at a very fundamental level so you could think of that, that, that representation there as we'll walk through it again let's think about things you should be afraid of it's a funny category, well an animal wouldn't really have a category of things to be afraid of what an animal would have is specific things they're afraid of ok, and so then the animal would have to learn what do you do in the face of all those specific things that you're afraid of so, you know, maybe you, I don't know, you, you climb a tree if, it's, if you're a monkey and it's a jaguar maybe, and you go under the underbrush if you're a monkey and it's a predatory hawk, something like that you've got these individual escape mechanisms that are tied to the specific stimulus but then there's human beings who are capable of abstraction and so you might say well, there's a class of things to be afraid of it's those things that you should be afraid of those are the things that go bump in the night, right? you're always exposed to them when you go to horror movies especially if they're not the gore type of horror movie 
they're always hinting at something going on outside of your perceptual sphere and they frighten you because you don't know what's out there and so the Blair Witch Project was a really good example of that because nothing ever happens in that movie but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's frightening and not gory so it's, it's kind of an interesting horror movie it plays upon the fact that you do have a category of those things to which you should be those things about which you should be afraid so it's a category frightening things and then and only something capable of abstraction could come up with the category of frightening things and so Kelly is like an embodied representation of the category of frightening things and then you might ask yourself well once you come up with the concept of the category of frightening things maybe you could come up with the concept of what to do in the face of frightening things which is not the same as what do you do when you encounter a lion or what do you do when you encounter someone angry it's a meta question right you could say you may encounter a frightening thing what's the thing what you should do what should you do about it but then you could say at a philosophical level you will encounter elements of the category of all those things that can frighten and undermine you during your life is there something that you can do as a category that would help you deal with that well and the answer is yeah there, there are in fact and that's a lot of what religious stories and symbolic stories are trying to propose to you is the solution to that one is approach it voluntarily <coughs> carefully but voluntarily don't freeze and run away explore instead you expose yourself to risk but you gain knowledge and you wouldn't have a cortex that you know is ridiculously disproportionate if as a species we hadn't decided that exploration trumps escape or freezing it's like we explore that can make you the master of the situation so you can be the master of something like fire instead of just being terrified about it so and one of the things that's absolutely phenomenally fascinating I think is that one of the things that the Hindus do in relationship to Kelly is offer sacrifices you say well why would you offer sacrifice to what you're afraid of well it's because that is what you do that's always what you do is you offer up sacrifices to the unknown in the hope that good things will happen to you so in a sense you know you're faced with something terrible the uncertain future that faces all of you right something you're afraid of no doubt I mean how many of you are worried about your future yeah why you're all young you're smart you're relatively good looking it's like what the hell are you worried for what are you worried about <laughs> yeah right in this classroom right well maybe you're worried about what you're gonna do or who you're gonna marry or what your job's gonna be or you know your health or your family or there's a whole category of things to be worried about so then you think well you're worried about the future so what are you doing in university well I would say you're sacrificing your free time in the present to the cosmos so to speak in the hope that if you offer up that sacrifice properly the future will smile on you and that's another fundamental discovery of the human race it's a big deal that discovery it's like think about it this way by changing what you cling to in the present you can alter the future wow you know I don't know when we discovered that maybe when we first started to store food or something like that but it's a mind-boggling it's a mind-boggling discovery you know it's it's the, again it's one of the prime discoveries of human beings so you represent the thing you're afraid of then you think okay there's a class of things that I'm afraid of that are unknown what can I do about them well that's a really good question it's a sophisticated and complicated question and we do know the answer to some of it it's like approach cautiously voluntarily when necessary don't run especially if the thing that's in your way if the thing that frightens you is opposing your movement towards a valued goal do not freeze and run away because the thing will grow if you do that and you'll shrink so that's a bad strategy so <clears throat>